Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CHI of your host, Odysseus. Now, World War II movies, and by extension, all of media, is designed to appeal to heterosexual white men. But WW2 movies are designed to appeal more specifically to heterosexual white American men. Because America means shooting a German in the face while teabagging a Soviet. So let's make a movie about Russians! What? Enemy at the Gates is a fictional story. <sighs> through a Russian sniper's rise through propaganda fame and his skills being put to the test by a German sniper. And what confuses me is the production behind this. I thought this was going to be a foreign film, but nope, Mandalay Pictures is American, which means that all the Russian and German characters can be played by English and Americans. There goes Hollywood whitewashing history. I cannot stand for this. I demanded that Caucasian actors be replaced by slightly different Caucasian actors. Maybe then you'll learn the importance of sensitivity, Hollywood. Anyway, we open with... Well, I guess that's one way to make money. Hold the audience at gunpoint. I do not tremble. I have no fear. I'm a big boy now. This is the weirdest advertisement for Huggies I've ever seen. Now, Vasily! Fire! Fire, Vasily! Fire! Oh, that's one! <sighs> Excuse me. I'm just playing the dramatic shots in movies! Own it today! Okay, I have to admit, I do like that typography. It's very fitting for the Soviet Union. Speaking of which, the very next scene doesn't have much going on. At least plot-wise, since it's just a battle. A well-presented battle, I'll give it that, with men being shuffled through like cattle put into suicidal charges against German forces and being shot by their superiors if they retreat. This should work in theory, but I feel like it could have been more effective towards the middle or end of the movie. Putting it in the beginning feels very impersonal. We haven't been introduced to any of the characters, and if they weren't any countries or political symbols, this would be entirely meaningless. Oh, I'm sorry. The message is WAR IS BAD! Taking it will give you cancer! Smoking it will give you herpes! It will give you movie rights! Anyway, we're then introduced to our main characters, right after it would have mattered. Seriously, were these scenes put out of order? But I digress. Our hero is Vasily... Vasily... Zaitz... Well, at least they didn't give him a generic Russian name like Dmitri or something. Do you remember Call of Duty World at War? Where you're a Russian sniper picking off Germans while in a destroyed fountain full of dead bodies? Well, this scene is exactly that! Right down to shooting when there's a loud noise! Now, I know that the creators may have gotten this from the same historical source, but after looking at the time between the releases and how both of them involve a fictional officer and a private helping each other out, yeah, I'm just gonna say rip off. Nonetheless, it's a fairly intense scene as Vaseline completes the tutorial. Um, I mean, he takes out the Germans. His advanced tactics of common sense impresses the commissaire, which leads to the best part of the movie. And me, what did I have? The sacred duty to resist. I have to report to the boss. Perhaps you'd prefer to avoid the red tape. You gotta be kidding me. Bob Hoskins as Nikita Khrushchev. This is a great decision. I mean, sure, it highlights the ugly trend in Oscar movies to use well-known actors to play a historical significant political figure and only in supporting cast. See also the King's Speech. But seriously, Hoskins nails Khrushchev. Not only does he pull off his mannerisms and bears an uncanny resemblance, but take this scene for example. Now officers, how do we boost morale? Should all the other generals who have retreated, and their chiefs of staff too. Make some examples. D deport the families of the yeah, deserters. <laughs> okay. 
Now that's a man that's jaded from years of torturing people. I bet he can't go to sleep at night without replacing a man's eyes with his testicles. And I'm not sure why I'm so happy about that. Give them hope. <clears throat> I'm sorry, what? The way of courage. The way of love of the motherland. Sacrifice. Bravery. We must make them believe in a victory. We must give them hope. Pride. A desire to fight. Hope. A feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Um... I'm not saying that the Soviets couldn't inspire hope, they just have a different way of doing it. But Nikita likes it, and the Commissar, played by Joseph Fiennes, prints out a ton of propaganda, making Vasily famous. But Vasily can't adjust to this newfound fame, and he soon discovers that his friends, and even people he's never met before, are giving their lives for him. Racking him with guilt and depression, and no manner of fast cars, loose women, and an endless supply of booze can dull his pain. After eventually crashing his car in public view, rumors and accusations began flowing around, making Vasily's employers question his lasting appeal. Vasily knows that it's only a matter of time before his ruck runs out, and he'll be left with nothing but a crippling addiction and a one-way ticket home. At least that's how I would have written it. MONTAGE TIME! And it's not a bad montage, it just blows by that whole fame thing. Would've been nice to see some of these exploits, if they even were real. But no, the movie just kinda shoves a big whatever in your face and you have to deal with it. Mmm, should I really shoot this guy? Me, oh my, I can't wait to go home to my wife and children. Uh, I just hope that the missus doesn't learn about Hilda. Um... She'll throw a fit if she learns I've been sleeping with our dairy cow. Oh, God! Does a shot count if I added it in post? Oh, well. So it is you. The great Vasily Saitsev. Oh no, we're not really doing this, are we? That's right, the movie decided to throw in a kid. Look, I know that children are just as much a casualty of war, and while he's not as bad as most child actors, he's still very distracting. It's like you have all this war is hell adult drama, and then BAM! It's kinda like when they put child sidekicks in 1940s comics. One way or another, they're gonna be a pain in the butt. He was only a foot soldier. It wasn't worth giving away my position. Yeah, that. Oh, I'm sorry, what's the kid's name? Sasha. Wait, is that Sasha or Sasha or... Seriously, is it too much to ask to get the names right? Also, I'm not gonna make a joke about how he has a girl's name. I prefer to be a bit more tactful than some other people. So get this, Vasily has been getting fan mail from people all across the country. What, did they set up a P.O. box for him? Maybe they'll set up a 1-800 number next. Come to think of it, who even is Vasily? 30 minutes in and we don't know a thing about him. What are his hopes and dreams? His political opinions? What is he doing on his days off? What is his favorite color? There's nothing wrong with not knowing everything about a character, but it's another to tell barely anything about them. Although we do learn that he's somewhat illiterate. Trace. R -A -I -S -E. Oh no! That can mean only one thing! A forced love interest! Somebody, or some anonymous mass of semi-humans, decided that this grim and gritty, ultra-realistic war drama needed a love triangle. Do I even need to explain how this is wrong? So let's count the jokes. This gritty reboot of Twilight is weird. They got better actors, that's the least I can say. All is fair in love and focus groups. Saving Private Ryan from love. Good thing there's no necrophilia or bestiality. Damn it. Too many Twilight jokes. Well, 
Better luck next time.